Hi there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel and return subscribers. Thank you for checking in on me. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about the new um, bail conditions. And people must be wondering, why does she keep sending out messages that help the criminals or help people on bail or help people, illegal immigrants? Well, I bet that's what people are wondering, you know. But you know what? I try to help those who, I'm not going to say can't help themselves, but people who might not access newspapers and who may not be aware of what's going on and all the changes. And even though it doesn't directly affect me, it could direct, it could affect people that you know. You just never know. You might wonder, you know, you could be, you know, I'm not wishing it on anyone, but you could be approached to, um, to be a surety for bail. And if you don't know that it's been extended from 28 days to nearly a year, you might think, OK, it's only 28 days. I've got, you know, whatever the bail money is. It might be a thousand pounds. I don't know how much bail money is. It might be a thousand pounds. So I'll put that down for bail for 28 days and then I don't have to worry. When you realise it might be 20, it might be nearly a year before um, it comes up or they're released from bail. You know, you need to have that money on, on, on standby just in case. So I think when I'm talking to one set of people, we all know somebody who could benefit from the information. Anyway, um, before I go into this bail thing, I just got this video. It's all to do with the same thing, really. Deportation, bail, prison, criminals. <laughs> we'll say what kind of friends you have. But anyway... I'm going to show you this. No charter flight. That's what the people are chanting. You hear them? No charter flight. Lock him down. London. You see it? Right outside number 10 Darling Street. Right outside with it. You know? Let Barry Johnson know that he must come out and frig in bed. And do fucking lies. You understand? These are the things. You see it? Total lockdown, my people. Peace of power. We come here and I'm going to talk on sidewalk. No, we take it to the road. In the middle of the road. That's what it's all about. Peace of power. Right on the road with it. See that? Right on the road with it. And we take it to the people. We take it to the street. Let's see. And now we're there. All the time. See that? Mass. This is London. Right across the road is where the Prime Minister lives. Are we? He, he, uh, he's only round the corner. He's only round the corner. And he can hear us. Aye. He knows we're here. Are we building this city? That's right. Aye. And he's got to remember, we've been here from time. On time. He's before his parents even walked here from Belgium. We've been that. here. Yes. We are true people to this man. A true. So we need respect. All now. the time. No chartered flight. That's right. Yes. Stop that. Not if it's going to make a difference, though. Galaxy Radio, the only people in Washington State, and yes, so we're dead. None but ourselves can heal our kind. You said the Aston, yes, so? Aston and it? No charge of life. Away, I don't fool you. Well, I thought I'd start it off with that and get a little feel of what's going on. So that's one thing, no chart of flight. But I wanted to let you know about the legal changes. I'm just going to read it so you are aware um, about being released on bail. And I think that's also important. So, legal, um, you could be released on bail, just a little bit, for those of you who don't know, I'm assuming people do know what bail conditions are, but, you know, sometimes, you know, I had to look it up, 
because I've never had to bail out anyone. But, you know, you just never know when that situation might arise. I mean, those people, um, they're just regular family members. They're just concerned about the charter flights. And you never know. They could be picked up by the police, bung in jail, and then they're going to be calling you about surety for bail. Are you going to um, put up bail? Can, are you going to put up the bail money? And if you do, you need to know what's going on. OK, so you can be released on bail at the police station after you've been charged. This means you will be able to go home after your court hearing. If you are given bail, you might have to agree to conditions like living at a particular address or having someone put up money should you abscond. Bail can see a suspect released while their case is heard in the courts. The decision whether to grant bail lies in the hands of magistrates and judges. If granted bail, a suspect can return to their home or designated address while their case travels through the criminal system. But they're usually tagged. You know that big old chain thing that they have on their foot, like criminal. And these are just suspects, you know, they're not even charged. They suspect, but what they do, they put them on bail while they're investigating them. I mean, how long does it take to investigate? Either they're a criminal or they're not. But they're talking about, oh, they want to extend it from 28 days to three months to six months to a year because they've run out, they haven't got staff. I mean, isn't Boris Johnson putting goodness knows how much billion, I think 1.8 billion in the police force. So what are they doing with the money? Don't even get me started. In most cases, police can only hold a suspect in custody for 24 hours before charging them or releasing them. When a suspect enters the court system after being charged with a crime, magistrates will decide if they are granted bail or remanded in custody. Court bail covers the period from the suspect's first appearance in the magistrate's court to the date the defendant is sentenced for the crime. If found not guilty or if the case is thrown out, both the suspect and prosecutors can apply for bail conditions to be changed during the case. The, the courts can refuse a person bail for the following reasons. If the court feels that there is a risk of the defendant absconding, but then they're supposed to get the bail bond, um, the, to prevent the defendant from committing further crimes, to prevent the defendant from interfering with witnesses, for the defendant's own protection, if the defendant is in prison for another offence, where the court does not have sufficient information about the defendant, if the follow if following conviction if it is necessary to keep the defendant in custody for pre sentence reports to be completed, and if the defendant has breached bail conditions. Courts can grant conditional or unconditional bail. If a court grants un if a court grants conditional bail, the defendant must abide by restrictions set down by the magistrates or the judge. Conditional bail can be used to reduce the risk of the defendant committing further offences, interfering with witnesses, absconding or for their own protection, which I said before. Um, conditions that can be imposed include curfew, a requirement to surrender a passport, an ele electronic tag, a requirement to report to a police station or not to drive. Now, you know that requirement to report to a police station, they call that reporting. And remember, the guy that was talking about the guys who are being deported, they were on report. So people on bail, even though they haven't been convicted, could be deported because that guy said that they were... The way they're supposed to report, they're calling it a training day, but they're actually looking to pick up people who are reporting. So it's not great. Um, the courts can also impose a surety or security requirement as an insurance against the defendant fleeing. A surety or sureties will put up a sum of money in the hands of the court as a guarantee that the defendant will not abscond during a case if they're granted bail. The sum of money or value of assets required to grant a defendant bail will be decided by the court. If the defendant does flee the country 
or thus flee anywhere. The surety will forfeit, forfeit the money or the assets. The surety will have an opportunity to tell the court why they should not lose the entire sum, but the starting point is that the whole amount should be deducted. And they probably have to sign something, so they probably don't even have to have a say. Former Law Justice John Widgery QC said the surety has seriously entered into a serious obligation and ought to pay the amount which he or she has promised unless there are circumstances in the case relating either to the means or to culpability which make it fair and just to pay a smaller sum. I wonder on what grounds you could pay a smaller sum. If the bail is 20 grand, I wonder what would make them reduce it then. Have you got any ideas? What happens to the defendant if they breach bail conditions? If a suspect breaches bail conditions, they will be brought back before the court. It is then the decision of the magistrates or the judge whether the suspect is remanded in custody or released on bail again. And the thing is, if they um, if they breach bail conditions, I think it's only if they jump ship that the surety loses the money. I think if they breach bail conditions, like if they don't go to the police officer and report like they're supposed to, I don't think that the surety loses their money then. But I think if they abscond completely, then the surety will lose their money. Currently, pre-charge bail limit is 28 days. The Policing and Crime Act 2017 Act specifies a statutory maximum police custody time limit known as the pre-charge bail limit of up to 28 days, with the exception of certain cases. And this is being increased up to three months, six months or 12 months before it was not possible to keep someone on bail after 28 days. Um, the time period had elapsed. So this means that those out on bail can be tagged, curfewed and have a passport confiscated for up to a year. That's my interpretation. Pre-charge bail is when a suspect under investigation for a crime is released from custody, potentially subject to conditions, while the police continue their inquiries. They are required to return to the police station to answer bail at a certain time and date. When the police release a person from custody, but they have not been charged and the investigation is ongoing, that person may be released on bail. This means that they are under a legal duty to return to the police station at the date and time provided to them. Sometimes, Conditions are attached to the bail, for example, not to contact the victim. Bail gives the police time to gather necessary evidence such as statements, CCTV evidence and forensic evidence. There is, a little, there is an initial presumption that a person being released from police custody without being charged will be released under investigation, not bail. However, there are situations where bail is appropriate. For example, if the person has no permanent address and will be difficult to locate in order to conduct further inquiries, or if conditions need to be applied because the person is likely to abscond or intimidate victims or witnesses. A person can initially only be put on bail for a maximum of 28 days. That's the applicable bail period. However, like I said before, that period is being extended. Pretty Patel has, on the, um, has decided that she's going to overthrow Theresa May's restriction of 28 days, limit of 28 days. Some are released from bail without charge. What are the implications when their lives have been kept on hold for nearly a year? That's the thing. You put them on bail, you extend it three months, six months to a year. What are the implications on that individual when they're released without charge? They can't get that year back. And can you imagine, they can't be walking around with that tag on their foot. 
It probably affects their romantic life. It probably, because they can't take that tag off, you know. If they take it off for, I think, more than, I think they're allowed a shower or something. How long it takes to have a shower. There's certain time periods when they can take it off. But even then, it's supposed to be attached to something. And then they're supposed to call in. And a whole heap of stuff, you know. The applicable bail period may be extended if, for example, the work on the investigation cannot be completed within the specified time limits. When granting bail, the bail date cannot fall beyond the applicable bail period. If the case is sent to CPS, that's the Crime Prosecution Service, for a charging decision to be made, the applicable bail period is suspended and bail can be given for any length of time until the decision is returned. However, if we restart it, further work is requested by CPS. So that means that bail period could be even longer. Breaching bail, i.e. failing to report to the police station at the allocated time is an offence. However, breaching bail conditions, i.e. failing to comply with any conditions that are attached to the bail, is not an offence, but in such circumstances, the police do have a power of arrest in order to bring the person back to police custody, even though it's not an offence. <sighs> Patel has proposed doubling or trebling the length of pre-charge bail, which since 2017 has been limited to 28 days, under changes drawn up by May, Theresa May, when she was Home Secretary and implemented when she was Prime Minister. The proposal put out to consultation by Priti Patel would delay the point at which magistrate's approval for extension of bail is required from three months to six months or even 12 months. May introduce the cap on pre-charge bail as part of the Policing and Crime Act 2017. The cap followed a series of high profile cases during which the suspect remained on bail for more than a year before ultimately being released without charge. And this is what they're going to do again. And these aren't even probably high profile cases. It's, you know what it comes like? It comes like they just want to tag everyone. You know what I mean? They don't want anyone to be free. Especially young black men. Any excuse. To put a tag on them and know what they're doing. That's why those people protesting at the House of Commons, man. They're doing it with good intention, but boy, I don't know, man. I don't know, number one, if it's going to make a difference. I don't think it is going to make a difference. And number two, they're just going to, they're just going to give the Home Office an excuse or the police an excuse to give them a criminal record. That's what worries me. And that's why I think they let people know that Jamaica was being, Jamaicans were being deported because they know Jamaicans are going to do something about it. Even if it's a silent protest, or well, in that one it's not so silent, but, you know, there's no violence or anything. But they know it'll drag them out. Like I said, smoke them out, like the amnesty. You do something like that that's unfair, they all come out, don't they? Next thing you know, there's going to be a police swoop and goodness knows how many people get arrested and end up with criminal records where they didn't have any before. I don't know. Let me see. Other changes include removing the presumption against pre-charge bail and allowing officers of a lower rank to authorise and extend pre-charge bail. So that means anybody, really, what they're saying, anybody can decide that they're going to extend the bail time. A duty on officers to use pre-charge bail in cases where it is necessary and proportionate, including for cases where there are risks to victims and where it could prevent reoffending, is proposed. There is a notion that offenders will definitely reoffend, which will increase the denial 
or extension of bail because they do believe when when police are going out and do scouting criminals they're always looking for offenders because they say they've got a I don't know what the percentage is but they reckon they're more likely to reoffend so if they already have it in their mindset that people who have offended once are more likely to reoffend that would give them an excuse whether or not those people have rehabilitated, got on with their life, doing well. As far as they're concerned, they're under the radar and they're likely to reoffend. Therefore, an excuse to extend their bail, their bail conditions, an excuse to keep that tag on their feet for three months, six months or 12 months. Limit their travel, take their passport. Richard Miller, Head of Justice at the Law Society of England and Wales said, in the interest of both justice to citizens not yet charged and to public safety, pre-charge bail and release under investigation must be used appropriately as if, as if. The 2017 Act, though flawed, sought to introduce greater efficiency efficiency to police investigations by limiting the use of pre-charge bail and setting limits but officers often struggle to investigate cases expeditiously under the under-resourcing under-resourcing yeah my foot any excuse and we just have to sit and swallow so innocent people are penalized for their inefficiency basically i don't even believe it The only thing, you know what it is, they want to find something. So that they're scouting around, they can't find nothing, you know. So they're there wanting to find something and then of course they've got to kind of mess around with it to make sure it's appropriate so they've got an excuse to keep them for longer. It's just a load of crap, really. And then they say that's because years of underfunding has left our criminal justice system at breaking point. It simply does not have the resources to function effectively. That's because you've got all these bloody police officers on the street and all the police chiefs getting bonuses and goodness knows what else. And the admin staff, I don't know what they're doing. I mean, most of that stuff is done by computer anyway, but under resources. <sighs> It pees me off, honestly. But that's all. I thought I'd just let you have a little insight as to what's going on, just in case. Bye-bye.